We want to thank you for listening to Unfold. If you like this podcast, we invite you to listen to another popular podcast called The Capital Culture List. The podcast is a guide to noteworthy arts and cultural offerings around Sacramento. You can hear about plays, music, and museum exhibits in the area. Host Soterius Johnson discusses why they're noteworthy with UC Davis arts and music experts and longtime arts and culture journalists. Capital Culture List can be found on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and Blueberry. All this unfolding has my brain tired. Well, Alexa, since we've been talking food, I think we have time for just one more little bite, don't you? I guess maybe a little bonus? A bonus bite, yeah. Well, this is the part where we get to have a little bit of fun and talk about some of the other cool stuff we do here at UC Davis. And you know we can't talk about food without talking about the other thing that we do really, really well here. I think I know where you're headed, and I think it pairs well with food. An icy cold adult beverage, maybe? That sounds good. Well, you know we have one of the best brewing programs right here at UC Davis, and we were lucky to have had Charlie Bamforth lead that program before he retired. If you're a beer fan, you probably know him as the Pope of Foam. In fact, one of my coworkers here was in, of all places, Lebanon, and he ran into someone who knew Charlie Bamforth. No way. Seriously. Well, Charlie taught brewing sciences for more than 20 years here, Luckily, he sat down with us before he left and told us a thing or two about all those weird craft brews that seem to be popping up everywhere now. Do you know, there's a lot you can do with malt, hops, yeast, and water. And why do you need to keep pushing, pushing the envelope all the time? And if you go globally, there's some bizarre things that have been put into beer and some bizarre storylines, like the, the beer that was made with the yeast that came out of a guy's beard or Rocky Mountain Oyster Stout in uh, Colorado. And I'm thinking, I don't, want, I don't even want Rocky Mountain Oysters on a plate. I, I mean, I, I think they should be left exactly where they came from. So Alexa, I guess that's no bull. What? So bull is where Rocky Mountain Oysters come from. So again, Rocky Mountain Oysters are balls of bull. Ew. <laughs> That's why I said, that's no bull. <laughs> I did not know that. Ew. That's disgusting. <laughs> I thought they were actual oysters. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wait, so do you think, does everybody know this? Well, as Charlie likes to say, drink in moderation. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would I don't think I would drink that ever, but <laughs> speaking of moderation, he did say that there's a few beers that are getting way too high in alcohol content. And there's something wrong with that? There is. If it involves a dead squirrel. Oh yeah, that story was so strange. <laughs> no, seriously. Charlie told us about this company in Scotland that actually made a beer from a stuffed but real squirrel. Brew dog in, in Scotland. And I like the guys. They're very good people they're very smart but you know shoving a beer of 55 percent alcohol inside a dead squirrel is <laughs> is a wee bit on the bizarre side you know uh, and I, I understand why it's oh those are the crazy guys who put the beer in the squirrel you know let's try their beer so it's all about marketing so the beer is called the end of history well it certainly was the end for the squirrel <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor squirrel that's the thing with beer it can be delicious, but beer can be a little bit too much for me too. Like the older I get, the more that I start cutting things out and being a little bit more careful with what I put in my body. And I ended up confessing to Charlie that beer was one of those luxuries I cut out. And it turns out that I've been depriving myself for like no reason. People talk about beer bellies, it, it's a myth. Um, it's all about calories in and calories out. And the main source of calories in any alcoholic beverage is alcohol. Why is there this myth? I, it's a very good question. Why is there this, in, uh, this myth? And it's all tied up with wine snobbery, I think. And I think also it's confused by lifestyle. Uh, what I'm fond of saying is, you know, wine drinkers um, jog. Beer drinkers don't jog. Um, wine drinkers eat lettuce leaves, uh, beer drinkers eat burgers and sausages. Um, and so, you know, you might expect that some beer drinkers who have a somewhat sedentary lifestyle and probably drink too much, yeah, they may be a little bit bulky because they're not exercising. Whereas there's plenty of people who will have a glass of wine and, and you know, nibble on a tiny amount of salad 
and belong to health clubs and punish themselves on treadmills and so on and so forth, and they look kind of fit, but it really has nothing to do with the drink. See, Alexa, beer can pair well with lettuce leaves. I couldn't believe all the stuff that Charlie told us about how healthy beer is. It's full of antioxidants that absorb into the body. It's got B vitamins. It's got folic acid, all this stuff. Well, if I didn't need more convincing, now there's even more excuses to drink beer. Beer uh, contains uh, minerals. It's the richest source of silica in the diet, and that's good for the bones. Uh, As I like to say to people, the next best source is granola. You choose. So beer or granola? Or is that even a question? I don't know. But there is something that we need to take a little bit more seriously. And it's something that affects us all. And it could also affect beer. And that's climate change. I worry about climate change a great deal. And uh, I think everybody should uh, be sensible and, and take heed of it. It, you know, it will change the availability of malting barley. It will change the availability of hops and the quality of hops and so on. It's already um, a sensitive issue for something like malting barley. You can't just take any barley. It's got to be good quality malting barley. And um, it's a high risk crop to make because if it's not right, it'll be rejected by the maltster and therefore the brewer. So basically, the key ingredients in beer could be at risk, right? Meaning farmers would switch to other crops, meaning less beer and probably higher prices for us. Yep. That's really upsetting. Well, there's only one thing really that we can do. What's that? As Charlie says, pour with vigor. Pour with vigor. He says it so nice. He says it way nicer than I do. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening.